YouTube, welcome back to my channel. For those of you new here, my name is Allie D'Andrea. I'm a hunter, an angler, a public lands advocate, and lover of all things outdoors. Welcome to my channel. Today, we are talking all about archery and specifically my arrow setup. I am in the process of changing arrows. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about what I'm switching up and why. So if you're interested, keep on watching. Okay, so I have been shooting this arrow right here, the Easton Full Metal Jacket five millimeter arrow in a 400 spine for the past like four or five years. These are my new arrows that I just fletched. There are a lot of really great advantages to shooting FMJ arrows. They are heavy, heavy, heavy arrows. So for a 400 spine FMJ arrow, which is the spine that I am shooting, it weighs 10.2 grains per inch. I'll include some numbers a little later in the video for my new arrows, which will put that 10.2 number into perspective. But in general, 10.2 grains per inch is heavy, especially when you compare it to most carbon arrows. Now, this full metal jacket has a carbon core, but an aluminum outer shell, if you will. They're bonded together, and that combination makes for this very straight, very durable hunting arrow. Now, a lot of folks like a full metal jacket because it is a heavy hitter. You'll hear people throw out that term a lot. And what they mean is that it transfers energy downrange, I apologize if the lighting's crazy. I am filming in front of a window, so that's bound to happen. But anyways, this heavy arrow is going to transfer energy downrange more effectively than a lighter arrow would, and it's going to have good penetration, but it is slower. It takes more time to actually reach the target. And the farther the shooting distance, the more of an arc that arrow will have to travel in in order to reach the target downrange. The FMJ is five millimeters, which is a small diameter. So that means it is less affected by wind drift. And that small diameter also contributes to better penetration. Just some general concepts that I wanna lay out for you guys in case you're new to this or in case you know this is all sort of getting jumbled in your brain. It's super simple. The heavier the arrow, the better the penetration. The heavier the arrow, the slower the arrow will fly. The smaller the diameter, the better the penetration. The smaller the diameter, the less affected it will be by the wind. So when I'm talking about penetration, I'm talking about the amount that arrow travels through or into your target. And when I'm talking about wind or wind drift, I'm talking about that arrow flying through the air and being pushed or moved by crosswind that's occurring. Now, with those concepts out of the way, uh, I've used this arrow and I've loved it. I've had great success with it. There's really nothing not to like about this, except I have recently decreased my bow's poundage. So I have about a 27 and a half inch draw length and for the longest time, I've been pulling somewhere between 50 and 55 pounds, roughly. Now, as of the past year or so, I've been having more and more issues with my shoulders. I think it's from lingering injuries that I've never really addressed. It's from poor posture. 
from sitting on the computer editing these YouTube videos and also my sleep habits. So I'm a side sleeper, I sleep on my side, my shoulders collapse. You probably didn't even need to know all of that information, but the point is I've decreased my bow's draw weight because I'm working on fixing my shoulder issues and fixing my draw cycle sort of all at the same time. I'm just addressing all of the issues and trying to make myself better. So in this process, it really has dawned on me how this heavy, heavy arrow is not traveling out of my bow very fast. And while speed is not everything, speed is important. A faster arrow allows you to make more mistakes in your yardage estimation. And when it comes to hunting, not every scenario is going to give you a perfect opportunity to range your target. So as a hunter, it is beneficial to have a fast arrow so that it flies in more of a quote unquote straight line. Again, because it's more forgiving in your yardage estimation. The amount that I have to adjust my sight when I'm shooting at 20 yards versus 50 yards is so drastic. This arrow just tanks it because there's not enough energy pushing that arrow downrange because my bow's poundage is so low at this point. But even with that said, my bow has always had a slow velocity because my poundage has never been above 55. And that is way lower than most people who are hunting. So because of all of that, I decided that this year, I want to dive into different arrow setups and figure out what is going to work best with my particular setup, my draw length, my draw weight, and my bow. This year, I am going to try out the Easton Axis arrows. Now, these are a carbon arrow, so inevitably they are lighter than the Full Metal Jacket. They are also a five millimeter, so my diameter has not changed, which is good for that wind drift. Having a small diameter is also good for penetration, which is definitely something that I'm going to need to focus on improving with an overall lighter arrow. But if you remember at the beginning of this video, I said the Full Metal Jacket in a 400 spine is 10.2 grains per inch. Now this Easton Axis arrow, also in a 400 spine, is nine grains per inch. So you can imagine how much lighter this arrow is going to be than the Full Metal Jacket. Now I do plan on increasing my front of center by using a 75 grain brass insert and using a larger fixed blade broadhead. I'm going to be playing around with configurations with my veins. So you can see here, this is one that I did last night. This is a four fletch um, with a right helical. I'm going to try different veins, different fletching configurations, all different kinds of stuff. I'll try different broadheads. And basically I am going to try and build the best arrow possible for my particular setup. Now I do still have a bunch of these full metal jackets, so I may try and sort of re-rig them and then do, <coughs> excuse me, and then do a comparison test between the two to see how they work out of my, ooh, sorry out of my relatively low poundage bow. So it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to it. If you have any recommendations when it comes to arrow building, I've been doing a ton of research and I'm pumped about it, but you can leave that stuff in the comments below. But I think that's it. I'm pumped to try out these Axis arrows and see how they do. So that is it, my friends. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm excited to share this whole process 
with you guys. It's going to be a fun time. And that's it. So I will see you guys in the next one.